Who knows Stephen Garten? Come on, he's the man. Actually, you're the man too, but that's okay. It's like, at least you are a man. It's like, good. It's like, Stephen, where is Stephen? I, I, wait, he's on the sound desk. Someone look after this. Ah, oh, there we go. Come on. I want you to put your hands together for this guy. We're going to have a bunch of people sharing tonight. Stephen Garten is amazing. We need a... And I just asked him to share some stuff tonight. Oh, man, here we go. Yeah, he, he'll explain all of it. Do we need the musos up here? Do we need them? Because we're going to run into some inspire worship, I mean, inflame worship after this. So let's do that. Okay, musos, you can go. You can go and take a few, all right? That's good. All right, here we go. What an intro. How's it going? Oh, that's good. Oh, I can't see anything except light. That's all right. <laughs> um, man, that was awesome. Come on. Yeah, that's good. Check it out. <laughs> um, so, the the thing I'm going to talk about tonight is um, something that I think is sort of a lot of people have been going through it, and um, and I think it's going to correlate to what the Inflame guys are going to talk about. I didn't actually go to Inflame. I'm just sharing something that Ian wanted me to share um, when I chatted to him earlier this week. So, yeah. So um, Isaiah 51:12. I watched this awesome message from Bill Johnson, and he brought out this verse, um, which blew my mind. It said, I, even I, am he who comforts you. Who are you that you should be afraid? It's, I love that. It's like, who do you think you are? You know, you, you've got to become aware of the overwhelming presence of God that covers every single aspect of your life. Who are you that you should be afraid? Um, because you can, uh, I mean, I get afraid, like fear of the future, like, I mean, changes are happening with, you know, people moving on and stuff, but, you know, that's exciting. That's, I mean, we're going to miss them, obviously, but it's new seasons, it's exciting stuff. Um, and, yeah, they're just up the road, like, we, like we, um, Ian was saying. Um, but it's that time of the year where, you know, winter starts to take its toll, it's, um, you know, like, yeah, the prospect of next year is coming up and there's change and uncertainty in the air. And and that can be quite, you know, you've been going through it and you just sort of, you start to get into survival mode like Ray was talking about this morning. Um, yeah, so next year scares me. Like, I'm halfway through my studies and so I know what I'm doing next year and it still scares me. But, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're like, what am I doing with my life? I know what I'm doing with my life, but I... Don't really have any idea. Um, but dr dreams that once seem real to you can, um, they can feel a million miles away sometimes, you know, when you're going through the desert. And that can be quite, it can almost be disillusioning, you know, like it was so real and so you're like, oh, that's awesome, that dream is amazing. But then you're walking through the desert and you're like, is that even going to come to pass? You know, the, God, you promised some things for my life where I don't see them happening. Um, but guess what? I have to take, take charge of my own faith, and I have to fight for it. Um, see, long-sighted faith doesn't lose heart at the thought of change, or transition, or uncertain times. It presses in deeper. It clings a little tighter. It grows in character. Um, a, a little thing that I've picked up over the years is, is don't wait for someone to prophesy over you if you're going through a hard time to encourage you. To, you know, to get built up in the Lord. Don't wait for that. If I waited for that, I would have gone under a long time ago. <laughs> um, you'll be waiting forever. Like, learn to prophesy over yourself. Speak life over yourself. Um, I do it all the time. It, it sort of keeps me semi-sane. <laughs> and these are some of the things I'll say. Like, you've been faithful in the little. You've fought the good fight for a very long time. You've given of yourself freely and faithfully for years. Um, you will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. You will experience breakthrough in every single aspect of your life. You will lead people into freedom and fullness of joy. And you will see the promises God has spoken over you come to pass. See, the God who started a good work in you is going to finish it. It's going to happen. Uh, the word peace, um, it, it, it's a word that sort of deals with the spirit 
the soul and the body. It's sort of this all-encompassing thing. But it's not just the absence of noise or conflict. It's the presence of someone, you know. Um, the Prince of Peace. He's present in your life, every aspect of your life. The worst thing a believer can deal with is a sense of hopelessness. To look at situations and think that they're never going to change. That can be, that can be crippling, you know. It's a crippling mentality to have. Um, and what you tolerate will dominate in your life. We get far too accustomed to those little foxes that destroy the vineyard. Um, what you tolerate will dominate. Those, those nagging doubts, the thoughts that you're not good enough, or that your dreams might be just too big. Maybe you just bit off a little more that you can chew with that one. No. Hope is based in eternity and the resurrection of Christ. Um, to live without that hope is, is to deny eternity from your heart. And that hope's not in who I am. That hope's in who he is in me. I, even I, am he who comforts you. Who are you that you should be afraid? Um, Romans 8, 18 talks about, um, For I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that we will be revealed in us. If you're going through a time of opposition or persecution, difficulty, pressure, and say to yourself, this is nothing compared to the glory that's about to break loose in my life. It's not even worthy of comparison. Um, Romans 8.26 Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Um, Romans 8.34 it is Christ who died and furthermore is risen and is at the right hand of God and also makes intercession for us. So both the Holy Spirit and the Son are making intercession for us. Jesus stands in my shoes, pleading my cause so that I might have the breakthrough. The Holy Spirit stands in my shoes, pleading my cause so that I might have the breakthrough. So then you get Romans 8.28, which says, All things work together for my good. No freaking kidding. We've got two-thirds of the Godhead pleading my cause. Of course it's going to work out. Who am I that I should be afraid? In the middle of the confusion, the struggle, press in deeper. Um, Jesus illustrated what perseverance like that looked like. He showed us what it's like to hold course no matter how many applauded or were opposed. There's not one part of my life, of your life, is worthy of hopelessness. Not one part. God says, I gave you my son. You're tasting of eternity. Who are you to live without hope? That's all good. Wow, that's awesome. I love what um, Stephen said about prophesying over ourselves. Yeah, it's really good. <clears throat> Language is so important. Um, because life and death's in the power of the tongue. So, you know, whatever you say over someone else can be hurtful or helpful, but what we say over ourselves can equally be con constructive or destructive. Can I, can I just share something? We, in a few weeks, we're going to have Clark Taylor with us again, which is going to be a great way to finish, kind of like, well, the second week in November, I think it is. And I was, I was hanging out with Clark, and uh, we were just talking about stories, particularly with the prophetic and particularly with words. And, and he shared this, this crazy story. He said, years ago, he said, I thought I was going mad. Um, he said, I, was, I thought I was losing my mind. I said to Anne, I, I, I just can't think straight. I, I, I wasn't sleeping and uh, all of those kind of things, you know. And uh, just life was just turning to custard all around him. And he said, I couldn't, have, my motivation went. Uh, my thoughts were confused. It was like really crazy. And then I'd been asked to speak at a pastor's kind of um, gathering for an afternoon. And I got up in the morning. He said, fear just gripped me. And um, if you know Clark, he's not that guy. <laughs> Thank you, I, yeah, you got that. And, um, and, and I've been around with him for years, and, I, I, and I've never seen him like that. You know? But he's like telling me this. And, um, 
And so he said, I, I eventually got to this venue. And he said, I sat in the car for ages. And then finally I thought, I have to go in here. But he said, I just, I've got nothing to share, literally nothing to share. And I'm walking across the car park, he said. And, and this, uh, this guy comes across the park, car park and he says, oh, so you're not, you're not, you're not mad then? You, and he goes, what? He goes, oh, you've not, you've not lost your mind. And, uh, and he goes, what? what are you talking about? And he goes, oh, there's a whole bunch of pastors and churches just up around Townsville praying that you'll go mad and that you'll lose your mind because they were intimidated by what he was doing in the nation of Australia. And, 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 you know, we all go, well, we would never do that. But the trouble is every time we talk about someone which is not constructive, we're doing exactly the same thing. Our words are so incredibly powerful. And the prophetic is linked to it because if we're a believer, we're speaking out of a well of something that's supernatural. And so, you know, I just want to encourage you tonight by a very discouraging story. The, the, the end result was as soon as he knew that, he said, he, he said oh, so it's that. And, and he said, I straightened up. He said, within 30 seconds, he said, the power of God came on me because I knew it was only the enemy. It was only, and, and amen, people get it. You know, for whatever reason they want to slag someone off, but, but they go, whether it's, you know, insecurity or, or whatever. But he said, I stood up and I walked into that meeting and he said, I never look back. He said, we had the power of God turn up. People were being slain in the spirit. There was pastors getting saved, which is probably necess necessary. And uh, it was all kinds of things. You know, and, it, and it was all good. Anyway, I just wanted to add that. Stephen, bless you for that. Listen, just a, a couple of weeks ago, we had, um, we had Charlotte, we had um, Dominique, uh, Simon, um, and we had Rachel Calder, Rachie, um, all go up to Rotorua, um, and uh, I want those guys to come up. Now, Dominique can't be with us tonight, she's working, but you other guys, just come on up on the stage here, uh, and, I, and I'm going to get them just to share for a few moments about some of their experiences. Um, they were with Mel, uh, Josh and Amberly Klinkenberg, and uh, uh, Kim uh, and Skylar Walker-Smith from Jesus Culture as well. They were kind of, you know, hanging out with these guys. And, uh, and so they've got a lot of stories to tell. And we are hosting in Flame South Island next year in, in Waitangi weekend. So as you listen to these guys, uh, you need to know that's going to be happening here in this building as well with Josh and Amberley. Uh, and so come on up, guys. Um, whatever you want to do first. I thought I'd get you all up. You can stand and look beautiful. And, um, and rock, paper, scissors. Who's going to go first? Let's... Okay. <laughs> That's decided. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so it wasn't last week. It was the week before last week, I think. Uh, yeah, we headed up to Rotorua, and we all stayed with Charlotte and her parents and had a good old time there and, and travelled each day down to Rotorua for this conference. Um, so I'll, me and Dominique have been signed up for this conference since probably March this year was when we booked our tickets and got everything sorted. Um, and so that's a, that's a long time to sort of build up some expectation of what, what I might, you know, be expecting to see. And it was nothing like what I had expected. I'd sort of, I imagined coming back being one of those flag wavers, you know, <laughs> going up there and getting this crazy experience with God and, and coming back all, all happy clappy like one of those, one of those people. Um, but that's not really what happened. When I got up there... Um, I guess for the last few while, I, I have been in one of those wee desert seasons, but the revelation that I got when I, when I was up there was, um, Kim was actually talking about a similar experience that she had had, and, and really laid it out in a way that, that finally for me brought some revelation into to where I was, and, and everything sort of matched up. So it wasn't, it wasn't an amazing encounter in the spirit for me up there, but what it was, was I went up there and every day, in every session, I couldn't pick a favorite. We just got this incredible impartation of, of teaching and, and of songwriting tools and, and all these incredible things from incredible people who have been doing it for decades um, on how we can use our, our creative talents to, to speak into, the, into you guys, into the congregation, to, to speak into our city and and all the neighbours who are going to hear these songs that we should be writing fairly soon. Um, yeah, so for me it was, it was really nothing like what I expected, but, but going up there and, and seeing the heart that those guys have for worship, it, was, it, was like, it felt like, I was describing it to Stephen today, it felt like I went up there 
And it was like as if I'd gone back to school and spent a week at school with all, all my friends that I'd gone through school with for the last 13 years. And that's what it felt like. It went up there and you're surrounded by 400 people who are all, all there for the same reason you're there, all having the same struggles that you're having, um, being a creative person. And, and it was just like you knew everyone, even though I'd never seen any of them before in my life. It was like you get there and it's like a big family meeting. Everyone's just getting there and, and having a good old time and, and learning from one another and connecting and, and just sharing experiences and, and sharing this time, writing songs together, getting together, doing all of that. And they had this amazing room, which they called the Furnace, which was basically a 24-hour prayer room with instruments and everything you needed to have a full band. And so constantly there was music playing and worship happening, non-stop, non-stop. They did have to um, stop it during the night this year just because of the venue they were at was a wee bit different. Um, but as soon as you're there in the morning, there's, there's 20 people in this room just, just worshipping. And any time you could go in there and, and do painting and writing and anything you could think of. It was just an amazing platform for creative people like us to, to get up there and, and learn from the best and, and learn from people who have been doing it for so long. And, and yeah, so for me, I've just come away with incredible impartation from these guys on, on tools and things that I can use as a creative person to, to serve God and to really portray Him well. And... Yeah, let's go. Yeah, um, In Flame was awesome. I went to In Flame a couple of years ago when it was in Te Aroha, and um, it changed my world and it changed my life. Like I, I, that that last In Flame, it was like God took all my insides and pulled them out and rearranged them, and then put them back in how they were supposed to be, and I couldn't, I couldn't function the way I had before anymore like and I haven't been able to since like this is the kind of thing we're talking about when you get in a room with 300 people who just love God and had just put aside a week to pursue him and it's just about getting before his face and spending time with him and learning about him and knowing him and understanding him and everyone's pulling in the same direction and something so powerful happens when you get in that environment because there's a single-heartedness we're all just pursuing the same thing. We're all just pursuing the same person, the same lover of our souls, and something just insane happens. And it's like, um, even after you go home at night, it's just, you can't get away from it because it's ticking over in your brain and you're dreaming about it. And it's like the presence of God just gets kind of cultivated around you in such a way that even while you're sleeping, stuff is happening and you wake up and you're like, uh, and you're tired, but you're like, uh. Um, <laughs> I was trying to think what to share, like what my, what my favorite bit of In Flame was. And um, I'm still trying to decide. Um, <laughs> but I think I'm supposed to share this. Um, I was going to share about embracing the season that you're in, which is kind of what um, Simon was talking about, that message that Kim did. But I feel to share this. Um, I got really sick um, the day I arrived in Tipuki, which is where we were staying. And I couldn't speak properly, and I couldn't sing. And it got worse over the week. And I got really upset with God because I was like, how dare you? I'm at a week-long prophetic worship conference. I can't play an instrument. I sing. That's what I do. I may not be super awesome at it, but I sing, and now I can't sing. And I got really upset and frustrated with God because I, couldn't, I didn't feel like I could fully participate. And... Um, I had this moment on a worship, uh, the first worship night or the second worship night, and I was on my knees on the floor, and everyone's worshipping. It's gone into free worship. There's people dancing. It's amazing. The presence of God is there, and I just can't connect because I have this thing in my heart towards God of this is, I'm so upset because I've been looking forward to this for so long, and I don't feel like I can participate. And um, he really gently said to me, Charlotte, it's not about you. (laughs) And I went, Oh, worship is not about you. It's not about what you sound like. I don't care if you can't sing right now. Worship is an attitude of your heart. You choose to step into worship. It's not about what you sound like. I don't care if you can sing or not. In the first four days until I kind of started um, getting my voice back a wee bit was me 
struggling with and coming to terms with this thing of I can't sing but I can still worship. And, um, and the other thing was my worship doesn't have to look dignified because it's not about me. Yeah. <laughs> worship is about me pouring out everything that I have to praise a God who's given me everything that I needed. It's not about me feeling good and it's not about me um, getting the warm and fuzzies, although that does happen because God is good and he responds to our hearts. But it's about me coming to this place where I fix my eyes on him and I just choose to lay down everything that happened in the week and all the junk and just look at him and let everything else just grow strangely dim. And he's all that there is and he's all that I see. And um, the song that kept coming to me during the week is a spontaneous song by Bethel because I listen to a lot of that. Um, but it's this one where she sings and she says, um, I take my dignity, I lay it at your feet. I have come to receive all you have for me. And it kept playing in my head over and over again. And it's like, God's like, come on. There's an opportunity here to learn something new. You can take your pride and you can take your concern about what other people think or about what you may look like and you can lay it down and just come and receive what I have for you. Just lay it down. Just lay it down and come and receive what I have for you. You know, kids, and when you offer them a lolly, they don't um, demurely and slowly come up to you. Oh, thank you. They come running, screaming, yelling. They snatch it out of your hands more often than not. And I think there's an invitation for us to do that with God because he's our daddy, and it's okay for our worship to look like that. We can run up to him yelling and screaming. We can dance. We can lie on the floor. We can, you know, it's not, it's not about being dignified or demure, and it's not about being silly on purpose, but... It comes back to a message I spoke a while ago. Sometimes love looks like being undone. And that's okay. And that's actually really special and really cool. And I think we cheat ourselves of that sometimes. And yeah, so that's something that I kind of learned at in Flame was like, worship's not about me. <laughs> it's not about me. It's about lifting him up and it's about glorifying him and spending time with him and, and that, that exchange of love. And I think we can go deeper and we can go further than we have before, but it might just look like stepping out of, not stepping out of safe, but stepping out of comfortable and just choosing to like explore what worship can look like and what we can be with him. Because I mean, like we had this amazing thing, one of the worship nights, it blew my mind. There's a stage and then there's like another second wee platform a little further down here. And um, we, we had dancers, so one of the things you can do is you can do a prophetic dance workshop if you're a dancer. And they teach you how to worship through dance, which I think is amazing. And um, so we had this girl here doing sort of interpretive dance, and she's in a dress all flowy and white, and what she's doing is gorgeous. And then this hip-hop dancer gets up next to her <laughs> and starts doing what he does. And I'm like, I don't, how is this going to work? Because it's a small platform. And um, the m music builds into like a warfare. And suddenly they are dancing towards each other. Like, I'm not going to try and do it because you'll be blinded for life. But, <laughs> but the hip-hop dancer is like popping and locking and pushing towards this girl. And it's exactly what's happening in the spirit. They've picked it up and started dancing it out. And this girl is doing it back in her own style of dance. And it shifted something in the atmosphere. Worship can look like that. It doesn't have to be, and there's nothing wrong with this, but it doesn't have to be this all the time. If God moves you to do something else, do it. <laughs> like, honestly, because it changes things and it brings a freedom that allows other people who come in the door to feel free before God. If we're not free before our Father, nobody else will be. So, yeah, that's kind of the thing, one of the things that I learned and picked up from um, in Flame this year and, like, really affected me and um, something that I've been challenged in and hopefully I'm going to grow in myself. And, yeah, just... And Flame was amazing and really cool, and I expected it to be amazing and really cool. And, but like Simon said, it was nothing like what I was expecting because I had expectations from last time I was there, and God just did something completely different and just as awesome but completely different. But, yeah. Oh, 
Oh, wow. It, Inflame definitely was like, my mind by the end of the week was like, what just happened? Oh my gosh. Like it just could not cope. I was tired and I was just going for it. But um, the moment that stuck out for me was um, we're in a worship set and God was just ruining everyone. Everyone was on the floor. <laughs> Even myself. <laughs> um, and like I was like this year has been a really hard year. Like it's been dry and I'm just like, okay, God, you have to do something because I'm at the last of myself. I have nothing left to give. And um, he was like, right, just dance. I was like, um, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. He's like, no, just dance. It's fine. And not many people know, but I used to do gymnastics once upon a time. <laughs> and I stopped. And I guess, like, God's just bringing that back up in me. And I'm just like, this makes me slightly uncomfortable, but okay. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that was something that stuck out. <laughs> wow. wow. You know, one of the... Um one of, the, one of the great things I remember Bill Johnson saying um, when, when uh, the move of God came again to their church because they lost it, and he said, uh, he said Lord, if you revisit us again, uh, in my, in my, I'll do my very best to pastor it and to lead it through rather than lose it. And, so, um, and God visited again. It's never stopped because it's now all around the world and, and, and all of that. But um, he said one of the things that he had to get used to was people that would come and just be obedient to God. And so we had a woman came in her wedding dress with army shoes on, boots, and danced up and down the front, and uh, freaking people out, and uh, freaking him out. And he was going, God, God. <laughs> and, um, and, and, and in the end, he just said to her, you know, you know, what, what's God saying to you? And she said, I'm the church. I'm the bride of Christ. And I'm trying to be obedient to what he's saying. But we're also in an army. We're not just in a dress. And, and he said, my heart melted because I suddenly realized someone was being obedient. Just an expression. And it released something of, of the church triumphant, the church militant, all of those things that some of us know about, um, we're, we're, you know, into the, into the congregation, and it brought release. And that's what worship's about. Now, I'm going to get the team up right now again, and um, we're, we're just going to finish in a few moments. But before we do, we're going to worship. And, um, and, and we're just going to be responsible. But I want you to put your hands together one more time for Stephen and for these guys, uh, Simon, Charlotte, Rachie. You know, they just, they just stepped out of what they, you know, were wanting to do and, and uh, just were incredibly responsive for that. So I want you to get up. I want you to stand up. And um, let's not get comfortable with that. I, you know, if you want to come up the front here, it's cool. Uh, and, uh, and you know, just come on, let's just worship. These guys are going to lead us um, as we do. Yeah, I know I haven't forgotten the offering. Everybody's waving money at me. It's so awesome. I feel like, I feel like a, I spoke once in a Samoan church. And at the end, this girl came out and they greased her up with oil. And they put um, uh, notes all over her. And that was my offering. It was very uncomfortable peeling them off. You know, I think I left it with some change. So that was really, really good. So, um, but that was my offering. It was very sticky. You know, like, thank you for coming. And uh, so, but yes, we're going to take the offering up. And what better place can we do the offering in worship? And so we're going to do that as well. So I was getting to that. Thank you guys um, for waving your money at me. But come on, let's just stand together. And tonight as we worship, as we give, there'll be puddles passed around, all of that. But this is part of our worship as well. The early church and the, and, and the Israelites used to wave their offering to the Lord. It was an amazing offering. In fact, it used to be in one offering used to be called a wave offering. So uh, as we worship, come on, let's just do that together in Jesus' name. If God's speaking to you, come. Um, you don't have to bring a wedding dress necessarily, but if he's uh, asking you to do interpretive dance, Garth, I want you to do that. Um, I, I, you know, if, <laughs> come on, let's hear it for Garth, an interpretive dance right now. That's Woo! so good, you know, like... Woo. So come on, let's just step into his presence. 
for a few more moments today. And this has been a great day. And uh, come on, let's just step into His presence. Holy Spirit, we thank You for Your goodness and Your grace on us right now. And uh, we step into worship before we do tea, coffee, or whatever. Lord, we come to You in Jesus' name. Your love. 